as many of you may know, unlike Flatpak, the origin of Snaps was outside of the desktop, in the server embedded IoT sort of space. But after a lot of work, with 1604 they made their way into the realm of the desktop. And since then, Canonical's been going full steam ahead, working on Snap adoption. In 21.10, the Firefox Snap became the default. There is now a Steam Snap available, it's not perfect, but they've been putting a lot of effort into it, trying to make this be the way that you game on Ubuntu. And for all the complaints these get, and in many cases rightly so, they do help people keep these applications up to date. And with 23.10, they are working on swapping the CUPS printing stack over to being a snap. And those are just the really noteworthy examples. There are countless other applications available on Snapcraft, and we can't forget the fact that the Ubuntu flavors agreed to stop using Flatpak. So it should be no surprise to absolutely anyone that an all Snap Ubuntu desktop will be available next year. This is going to be happening with the next LTS 24.04. With this, there are going to be two versions available. You have your regular, traditional, mostly deb based version, which if you've used Ubuntu LTS in the past, it's just a newer version of that. I say mostly deb based version because, you know, modern Ubuntu is always going to have snaps available like the Firefox snap, for example. The other version, this is the new one. This is an immutable desktop heavily reliant upon snaps. Now, every time I talk about immutable desktops, I get at least one or two comments being like, Brody, what is an immutable desktop? So let's do a refresher. So with a regular distro, you can basically dig into and change anything you want for better or worse. You could go into your Etsy directory, into your root directory, and just start deleting things. I wouldn't recommend it, but the option is absolutely there. You can take Ubuntu desktop and delete everything on the system except for Xorg and the Xorg dependencies, and the system is still gonna work perfectly fine. Whereas an immutable system, this works more akin to Android. We have a core operating system that the user cannot touch. And this isn't updated as individual packages. This is updated as a big block with a new system image. Now, this system image is typically using Delta updates. So you're not downloading, you know, tens upon tens of gigabytes. It's only including the changes. But the nice thing about having these different system images is you can very easily jump back between different versions of your system. It's sort of a built-in functionality of this method. Immutable is kind of a weird term here, and a lot of devs are starting to shy away from it, going more towards image-based. Because immutable distro kind of implies the entire distro is unchanging, which just is not the case. The thing that is unchanging is the current version of the operating system. But when you update, this is changed for another unchanging version of the operating system. And then the applications you want to install, this will be done through methods like flat pack, app image, maybe distro box, compiling code, and then having the binaries live somewhere in your home directory. Or in this case, snaps. This gives you a clear separation between the operating system and the applications that you use. So what you can do is delete the operating system, bring a new one in, and all your applications stay exactly the same. Yes, there are caveats on certain systems like package layering and opening up the root, but as a general rule, this is what it means to have an immutable system. And if you want to learn more about immutability, Ubuntu has a blog about specifically this, Ubuntu Core as an immutable Linux desktop base. Over the past couple of years, the idea of an immutable desktop has been gaining a lot of traction, with major distros like Fedora having the Silverblue project along with the other spins of it like Onyx, Seracia, and Kinoite. OpenSUSE has the MicroOS project, and there are also being projects out there like EndlessOS, which aren't really targeting the normal sort of Linux user. They're more going for the developing market, getting Linux in front of people that haven't really used a computer that often in their lives. But there are also startup projects that are fairly new, like VanillaOS, BlendOS, and even Universal Blue. 
all of these offer something a little bit different to what an immutable desktop is going to be. So it was kind of about time, really late to the party, for Ubuntu to have a desktop immutable offering as well. I say desktop immutable offering because it's not like they haven't already had an immutable distro available for quite a long time. That being the Ubuntu Core project. This has been around since 2014, 2015, and is a big part of the selling point of what Snaps were originally offering. This is the operating system optimized for IoT and Edge. Ubuntu Core is a secure, application-centric IoT OS for embedded devices. It is low-touch, reliable, self-healing, remotely accessible, and recoverable devices which are always up-to-date because of snaps with mission-critical over-the-air because of snaps updates. Basically, a long way to say it's a server OS that's heavily reliant upon snaps pretty straightforward. This project has a very similar name to a Fedora project called Fedora Core OS, which serves a very similar purpose. But as the description would imply, it is not a desktop system. This is intended for server IO2 embedded, all of that jazz. You can install it on a Raspberry Pi and you can run a desktop for a kiosk, for example, ignore the light theme, Brave's doing weird things. You can run a desktop on this. It's just not really the main intended function, and it's something you have to go out of your way to actually set up. Now, most immutable desktop systems out there have the desktop environment as part of the immutable operating system component. It's not something you're going to change out unless you change to a different OS that uses a different desktop. But... Ubuntu is Ubuntu, and Canonical likes to do things in a bizarre way. The potential of Ubuntu Core for Linux desktops. It also introduced the concept of modularity to the user experience, where users may experiment with alternative desktop environment snaps, or remaining on a highly stable, signed, and secure LTS base. This is not something that is like set up yet. It's not like there is a KDE snap available, an XFCE snapper, Hyperland snap. But if that's something they actually do, that would be kind of incredible. On the topic of things that you typically wouldn't use snapped. We all know that snaps have different channels. We have like the stable channel, the beta channel, and things like that. So what if... The use of snap channels also brings into play the concept of rolling certain elements of the distribution. Gamers, for example, might opt into a kernel channel, as in a kernel snap, that ships the latest NVIDIA drivers as soon as they are available, in the same way that the Ubuntu desktop team did for Mesa as part of the Steam Snap. So they've already done part of the way there with the Steam Snap. It's just a matter of doing that on the kernel level, which once again, is just bizarre, right? Like, imagine having an entire system where down to the kernel, snaps. Snaps are everywhere. You will never escape the snaps. Most of the rest of the system is just typical snap stuff, like automatically rolling an update, having direct support from the developers because a lot of developers directly develop the snaps themselves and things like that. So if you like snaps, this might be something that actually appeals to you. But I am not a big snap proponent. I don't hate snaps. It's just not my general thing. So who exactly is this system for? It's kind of hard to imagine because people like us are kind of the loudest people in this space. It seems like everybody on Linux is super into customizing their system, super into getting into the weeds and messing around with how everything fits together. But that's not the case for everyone, and it's definitely not the case for most people. There are a lot of people out there who just want an operating system that works. It doesn't matter if it takes two or three seconds longer for an application to load. It doesn't matter if the system takes slightly longer to boot because you're probably booting the system while you're brewing a coffee. And they probably don't even care about any drama regarding snaps or flat packs. It's just, does it work? Yes. In which case, it's probably good. 
There are a lot of developers out there who just happen to use Linux, but they're not involved in the Linux community. Maybe they even have a job at like Google making web applications, for example. They couldn't care less about what's happening in the Linux space. They just need Linux for their job. Those people, a desktop like this might actually be really compelling. Or if you happen to be the kind of person who installs Linux on your parents' computers, on your sibling's computer, on your friend or your aunt or uncle or someone in your life that isn't very technically savvy, but for some reason you still want them to be using Linux. In that case, maybe a system that automatically keeps everything up to date, that's a little bit more difficult to break. Maybe a system like that would work for a person like that. You turn it off at the end of the day, you turn it back on the following day, everything is just up to date and you're pretty much good to go. We'll have to wait and see what it's actually like when it's in the hands of users. Hopefully next year, if everything goes to plans, maybe it's going to be longer if something goes wrong, they can't get everything pieced together. But if the developers are already talking about this, then it's probably a lot of the way there. We might not be seeing the whole desktop environment snap thing at launch, but we're probably going to see the desktop actually being there. But if anything is certain, right, if anything at all is certain, there are going to be a lot of people out there who are never going to use the system in the first place, who are going to be very angry that this system exists. But there are going to probably be a lot of people out there who just don't care at all, who are going to be quite happy with it. Maybe it's going to be slower. It probably will be slower. But if it does everything else they need, is that really a bad thing? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is this a system you would ever see yourself using? Do you care about snaps? Do you like snaps even? I would love to know. And uh, yeah, if you want to become one of, if you like the video, go like the video. If you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and that was a scuffed outro. Daytime,